Um, right. So, uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for meeting. Uh, I'm here with Ian Burton, of course, um, on behalf of uh, the blog, Music Sheet Blogs. Blogs. Oh, whatever. On behalf of Music Sheet Blogged and Evil Shenanigans Blog. Oh, it's Evil Shenanigans too. That's me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's it's, you? it's small. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and yeah, I've got a handful of questions here that Sarah gave me. What kind of time are we working with for you, though? No? Oh, okay. Well, I don't, I don't want to drag it up that long for you. Yeah, so. Um, so I'll dig into it. Um, obviously, we're getting on a pretty amazing career you've had. Now you're almost knocking on 30 years in the industry. Yes, right? next year's 30 years. So what do you think you're most recognized for in terms of you know the long history of things? Um, I think, come on, yeah. probably, yeah. Like, uh, people, you know, a lot of people look at second chances. And uh, I don't know, the band kind of gave me a second chance. And, you know, I've seen lots of friends be in other bands and that band breaks up and then they try and start a new band and it just doesn't happen and yeah. we were immediately embraced by people so I, I think that's, I, mean, I feel very lucky to have that because you know, yeah. lots of people don't. Yeah. Do you think it helps, you know, the fact that you were immediately embraced and you were able to just jump right back on it, did like all the experience and all your past helped sort of getting into that or? Yeah. Like was it yeah, kind of almost an decided, easy door to walk through? Yeah, it was totally easy because we knew exactly what we wanted to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, like the first record was like totally written and ready yeah. to go. And, oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's a fun one she wanted to ask. Any ballpark on uh, how many shows do you think you've played? <laughs> well, definitely over a thousand. Yeah. It's maybe fifteen hundred. Yeah. Something like that. Wow. What's the weirdest one? First thing that comes to mind. Uh. Well, there's a couple. There's uh, once in Lethbridge. Uh, My sister was there. Really? The <laughs> yeah. owner of the club came on stage and knocked our drummer off the drum kit and took over on drums. What? Even though he couldn't play drums. Like right in the middle of the show. And uh, Was that with Come On? Yes. Okay. And uh, that was uh, absolute mayhem. Because yeah. we actually, we were like, all right, Hot Shot, let's see you play a song. And we started the next song, which he obviously you know, wouldn't know what song it yeah, is, yeah. right? couldn't play drums at all. So we, we finished the whole song though, like intentionally. Just, <laughs> this, if this is going to go down in flames, let's go all the way. Yeah, this, this is going to be painful yeah, for you so, too. Yeah, exactly. Shit. Okay. But yeah, that was a, that's definitely one that I always remember. Because I remember the bar staff walking over and handing us a bottle of Jägermeister and going, so sorry. Yeah. yeah. Did, is, did, do you have like a track record for doing this? Or? Uh, somewhat, yeah. Wow. It's an awesome dude. Okay. Yeah. Just felt like playing some drums? I guess so. Yeah. Alright, cool. Um, so after that long, I mean, if we're talking 1,000, 1,500 shows, do you find it tricky to sit and sort of bring the same love and passion every time? Or? No, because, uh, I mean, we don't play that often. We just play when we tour. Yeah. So it's easy to do. It's like you focus on this point, and that's where the energy goes. You know? yeah. You're not kind of like constantly putting out energy, You're trying to be a band full-time. Yeah. You know? I mean, we are a full-time band, but it's not like full-time, like 300 shows a year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How often do you guys tend to tour? It's usually Twice a year. And two, three months spurts or are five weeks. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay, cool. You know, we're older too. It's like, you know, when you get up to forty five you don't want to be really sleeping. I mean I like sleeping on people's floors because they're my <laughs> friends and stuff. Yeah. But you really feel it. It's not the same as when you're twenty three and you're sleeping on the couch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How is uh, the band dynamic coming? How is everything you know, getting being in a band with your girlfriend and then X. X, yeah, now and now X, you know, how I guess how was that originally when you guys were together and then did splitting up change a lot or it actually hasn't changed the dynamic of the band at all really. I mean um, I mean even though the two things were combined because we were a couple, uh, we still work the same way and we write you know, we bounce ideas off each other. I mean it's the three of us really, it's not just not just Katie and I. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like that's I think if Dean left or if Katie left, I mean that would the dynamic would never be the same. So it would just yeah. be impossible. Okay. Cool. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, yeah. entirely. I mean, yeah. I hate to, right up front, like fourth question, let's get into Whatever. the personal stuff. No, Start asking fine. you about your love life. Yeah. Well, we write about it, so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I guess that's one thing about <coughs> being an artist, right? Is you yeah. have to be willing to wear your heart on your sleeve. Yeah. yeah. Well, so. I mean, yeah, as soon as you walk on the stage, you're, yeah, yeah. you're, or you're, yeah. Out, you're out there. If you don't want to do that, then you shouldn't be playing live. Yeah. No good call. Um, okay, I want to shift a little bit and ask about some of the producing that you do. Okay. Um, now, I read somewhere that you don't produce, well, obviously you don't produce your own records, but I read that it's because you don't have as much fun with it, or... Well, yeah, it's, I mean, we have the 10-inch that's coming out this week. Uh, the band produced and mixed it, 
but that's just because we had uh, some time in the studio and we we're kind of under a deadline. But um, normally it's not as much fun. Yeah, it's it's more fun to walk into a studio and be a band member and be like, yeah, let's rock out. Yeah. As opposed to like, okay, is my guitar in tune? And then is my tone okay? And then I have to go in there and be like, how are the drum sounds and, and all that stuff. Yeah. And the guy we work with, Daryl Smith, we love. Yeah. So, he's, you know, he's an awesome dude and he's very upfront. It's really easy. It's like, that part sucks. Yeah. Get rid of it. Do you ever find it at all weird though, or do you find you butt heads Not at all, because like, he's like, uh, well, we used to kind of own a studio, a studio together at Portland and uh, King called Chemical. Yeah. So he's like old friend, like he actually built this restaurant that we're in right now. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Nice. Or helped start it. So yeah, he's like really old friend and yeah. totally trusted. Chemical's still going though, right? Yeah, you but guys... it's been through three elders now. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. I didn't know. And that's... Where you tend to do a lot of your producing? Uh, no, I freelance forever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, what album, recent memory, do you think you've had? Not just you know what's are you proud of in terms of producing, but have you had a lot of fun with? Uh, well, I'm doing a record right now with this band called Get Down from Edmonton. Yeah. And um, the, it was an awesome experience. We went out to a farm outside Red Deer, and yeah. uh, we could play it till five in the morning, full volume, no. Nobody complaining about noise, and we just set up in the house and made, made music. And cool. Shotguns and wrote ATVs. <laughs> <and, laughs> great great did you dog record? there. What? You recorded in the house too? Yeah, or in yeah we recorded in the living room. Okay, I, had, I temporarily, I grew up on a farm, so I had this temporary vision. I used to play guitar in my barn. I had right. a vision of I like wish it had been in setting the up in the barn and just recording all in there. But it was like one of those steel uh, prefab barns. It wasn't like okay. an old school. Like it would be better. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, I want to ask a little, and this is entirely off script, she's going to get mad, but um, about Happy Endings. Um, now you had originally, I caught a couple shows at Dakota last year when you guys were doing the residency. Um, that album was originally recorded without Kiro? Or was yes. That was yeah. all just you? Right? Yeah, well, with a few other guests. Yeah. yeah. Like Kevin Green from Portland right. Social Scene played on it. Yeah. Uh, Damon Richardson from who used to be in Danko Jones. Yeah. Uh, well, Aaron was on it, like the steel player from here on, and that's actually how I kind of met him. Okay. Yeah. But then you scrapped that. Yeah, I deleted the record because we re-recorded it. So, okay. Yeah. So is it the same record now, just with the guys no, from here on? It, no. It's actually pretty different. Yeah. But it's a lot. It's like half the same song. Okay. Yeah. And I know it's really confusing. Right? No. It's just, like, it's cool. Yeah. Well, no, it makes sense, right? You don't want to. If you're gonna redo it, you'll go back to it, but then suddenly there will be all those little things that you wanted to change right. or that you want different. Yeah. So. Cool. So when's that sort of moving forward? Whenever it gets done, it's like we've been working on it. Uh, I don't know. Most of the spring, I guess. Yeah. yeah as soon as the content is done, kind of just start. Working. Okay. Um. So, on the ten inch too. Yes. Um. How does that compare? I heard that it's. You did a 10 inch because one is like an 11 minute song yeah, or a 12 minute, minute song. 12 minute song. Yeah. That must have been a little different. Yeah, it's pretty different. Yeah. Everything else you guys have done is usually, you know, pretty, pretty close short. To the point. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's kind of like three, four minute parts, I guess. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's pretty different. I mean, there's at one point there's two versions of the band playing against each other. Yeah. Like there's two drum kits, two bass players. 14 guitar players. Nice. Are yeah, they so, are they doing kind of a call and answer thing? No, they're just... playing two totally different parts. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's like it's it's whatever experimental for us. <laughs> Be a bit Mongols esque. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. No. no it's, it's way more hardcore than that. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I love Mongols. So Tim's like one of my best friends. Well, ever. yeah, because you were. Yeah. I I used to used to watch you guys. I lived in Montreal from uh, 2000 to 2007, 2008. Oh, okay. And used to make as many Kamon shows, or sorry, uh, Bionic shows as I could. Cool. So, and spend a New Year's with Tim and Kelly. It was just the Mind blowing. Yeah. Did you, when did you wake up on the third? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah, probably. Um, just haven't really figured out. Hi, internet. Hi, internet. How you doing? Haven't really figured out exactly what's gonna go on, but yeah, I told Sarah I'd recorded either audio or video and figured out from there. So probably end up on my blog and 
I wouldn't be surprised if she does it on hers. I mean, it's that or transcribing it and writing it. So well, that just doesn't sound very fun to me. <laughs> yeah, no. And everybody wants to watch video instead of read. We're all lazy these days. Yeah. So, um, okay. Um, right. Uh, so back to come on stuff. Yes. Um, now, you guys did Pale Horse. It was recorded in three different cities or four different cities? Three different cities, yeah. yeah so Victoria? Uh, no, yeah, Saanich, which is outside Victoria. Okay. In a little shack. Yeah. And then uh, we did overdubs in Toronto and New Orleans. Okay. Why? <laughs> uh, we were on tour at the time. Daryl lives out there. Oh, okay. Daryl Smith. And uh, so we did all the beds there for, I think it was five days or something. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Katie did some bass and vocals in New Orleans with uh, Jay Younger from White Zombie, who's the guitar player. Yeah. He has a little studio there. And then uh, we did more overdubs in Toronto. And then we sent it back to Sandage and they're all mixed it off. Yeah. Yeah. Because and that's part of the reason it's not on tape is because like we knew it was gonna we knew we were gonna take our time on the record as well yeah. and every other record had been tape. Yeah. So we knew there was gonna be a lot of overnight so it's easier than carrying tapes through customs, which is that would be mayor an absolute nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> it's a microfilm. There's all sorts of secrets out there. Um, okay, now with it though, I noticed uh, you've been just giving the tracks away for free now on the website. Right? Yep, once a week. Once a week. And are you planning on just doing Pill Horse or are you planning on... No, we're going to do uh, one song from the 10 inch and uh, we had a, somebody requested some live tracks so we're going to record some tunes on the tour. Oh we'll cool. Throw those up, probably. When are those going? I've got, a, I've got um, Pill Horse. So. I don't know. Uh, I think the, the 10 inch will go, uh, the song from the 10 inch will go up either this week or maybe next week. Yeah. Yeah. And then the live. I don't know, probably at the end of the tour. Okay. Yeah. Because right now, the way it's staggered is it's all the free tracks go to the end of the tour. Yeah. Okay. And I guess what motivated that? You know, I mean, everyone's sort of, there's this huge debate about free music, you know, giving away digitally versus trying to sell it. And obviously, that's not necessarily working very well for the big labels. Right. But what pushed you guys towards doing this? I don't know. It just seemed like a good idea. Like, it's, you know, uh, free track of the week. Uh, and I don't, you know, we're not one of those bands that's like. Actually, I don't even know if we have an opinion either way about the, the argument. Yeah. You know, it's like, I mean, it's out there. I mean, you can go find our stuff on blogs and like, you know, rock blogs and yeah. stuff. So it's not this way. Somebody doesn't have to search as hard if they want. It, yeah. You know? Okay. And distribution the way it is now is, I mean, you know, there's so many more records now than there was say ten years ago yeah. that even getting a record in the store now is. You know, Trouble. Yeah. yeah. Well, no. That's. Have you, in the past, have you guys ever tried to sell anything digitally? Or yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Okay. Yeah. Junior uh, in Canada. Yeah. Um, and uh, Cobra Side in LA. Yeah. So iTunes. Still a vinyl junkie though. Love vinyl. Yeah. yeah. Love vinyl. That's pretty much all I listen to. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, couple more. Um, I uh, I actually didn't know a thing about this, so I have to plead guilty. But um, you're doing a seven inch with. Uh, Dean and Sean from the Sadies, is it? Sean Dean from the Sadies. Sean Dean, yes. sorry. Ah, she wrote this down wrong. Yeah. Good job, Sarah. Everyone gets his name wrong. Ah. Yeah. So uh, I have no idea when that's coming out because that's just a schedule thing that's like, yeah. you know, Sadies are incredibly busy. Yeah. And being an amazing man, right? So, yeah. yeah. Have you guys started on it at all or what sort of what stage? We wrote five songs. Yeah. yeah. But nothing's even, no beds, nothing's recorded? Yet. Nothing's recorded. No. Okay. Um, and I guess last little bit is next week, North by Northeast. Mm -hmm. What are you looking forward to? You guys are playing. That show is uh, really looking forward to seeing off. I love the seven inches. Yeah. Um, and uh, I love Black Lungs too. So it's like, and I don't know why, but every time we play a festival, Pack AD is on the same bill as us. Yeah. Don't know why. And actually, last time we saw them, we were like, why does this always happen? <laughs> so it'll be nice to see them again, I guess. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. We're playing, we're playing pretty much every day starting Thursday, so I don't know how much other stuff we'll see, but I'm trying to think of what else is going on. What is the, the schedule? Thursday you're at? Thursday in Peterborough at Spill. Okay. Um, Friday at 10, 11 o'clock at the Horseshoe. At the shoot, yeah. Uh, Saturday afternoon at 6 p.m. at Joe Carvello Mastering Party. Yeah. It's a free party. Oh, cool. Um, Saturday night at the St. Hollywood in Hamilton with yeah. Monster Truck. Nice. Yeah. Um, and actually the drummer from Simply Saucer DJ. Um, yes. And then we've got a story that started heading west uh, Tuesday in Thunder Bay. Okay, non sequitur, I'm from Manitoba. 
What's your opinion on the, well, the Jets coming back? Oh, that's you awesome. You a fan? Or? Uh, no, not really. No? Dean is like massive. Like, yeah. He wears a Jets shirt all the time. Nice. Um, but yeah, I think it's good, you know, and why, why shouldn't Quebec City have a team too? Yeah. I mean, that's a place that loves hockey, right? That's Obviously. just a matter of time. Yeah, it's hopefully. Yeah. Well, and for that matter, why doesn't the GTA have two more teams? Right. I mean, I don't know if, if ever, well, I guess you're not a hockey fan, so you won't be too offended, but there's a lot of people in the city that really don't like the Leafs. Yeah, well, so. I hate the Leafs. Actually, I mean, I am a little bit of a hockey fan. Dallas Stars are my team, though. Nice. So, um, I don't really care. Yeah. You know, no, I know. I figure I'm not much of a fan, but I think as soon as I have a team back in Manitoba, right. I'm going to be a fan again. Yeah. So, um, all right. I, that's really all I've got, okay. um, and I think all Sarah had. So, anything on your mind? Anything you want to chat about? Anything I'm forgetting? Or you want to um, promote? Well, we have that 10-inch, and uh, anyone who comes out to the shows and buys uh, buys any merch off of us, we have a free flexi that's uh, oh, available yeah. at the merch table. And, that, uh, that was from the the movie you guys did. Yeah, Lloyd the documentary. The no, it's uh, it's not a documentary. It's a comedy. Uh, oh. with Brian Polson and uh, Mike Smith, who's Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys. Okay, yeah. And it comes out in October. And that's all and about asked, LARPing. Yeah, and they asked all, a bunch of people to submit like uh, metal tracks. Most of the other bands are metal bands, but yeah, uh, we kind of just went like in seventies Judas Priest and Sabbath. Yeah, that's our metal, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a flexi with one song from the Ten Inch and a song from the Floyd the Conqueror soundtrack okay. on it, and uh, that's in Peak Group magazine, actually, the Calgary edition. Okay, yeah. Um, it's free. It's in the magazine starting, I think, yesterday. Okay. So it's random, though. There's three different bands. There's 5,000 flexis and three different bands. But you guys will have some next week? We'll have some at our, our merch table, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm yeah. going to come. I need to get the Ten Inch. Is the Ten Inch there next week, too? It'll be out on Thursday. All right, yeah. I need to get that, and I'll get a flexi. Cool. Well, all right, listen, thanks a lot. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cheers.